what can we come up with in order to explain near-death experiences? Um, that's why I think that near-death experiences are central to this task of a shifted paradigm because there's so many different features, characteristics of them that are anomalous. If you take telepathic communication, yes, it's an, 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 an anonymous um, uh, experience, but it's just one. Whereas in near death experiences, we have the tunnel, we have the light, we have um, the out of body experience, and, and so on and so forth. So there's so many um, char characters that are actually um, not currently explainable. So there's two possible procedures that we could use to um, come up with a model. One is top down. Um, and what, what this um, involves is taking the whole near-death experience and then speculating as to what can explain it? Now, um, there is another, I'll give you an example of that top-down process in the moment. There is another way of doing it, and this is the way that I would argue we should be doing it. It's um, bottom-up. So we take part of a near-death experience and we go through the usual cycle that um, scientists go through. Uh, they first of all, observe what's happening in the universe. Then they put forward a hypothesis. They test the hypothesis empirically. And then um, they start again and go around the whole cycle again um, and hold in on an explanation. An example of the top-down um, procedure I found this particular um, paper in Neuroquantology. Um, it assumed that the brain is embedded within a holographic structured field, that the human brain has an event horizon, which is uh, an event horizon is a concept which comes from black holes. Um, that biology is soliton guided and that the brain is a hypersphere. Now that's four um, concepts which are speculative and they're speculative not just in near-death experiences but they're speculative within physics. There is no evidence for any of these um, concepts. So um, that procedure I don't think is what should be uh, regarded as the way to go about doing things um, but that is what's happening with a lot of researchers at the moment a lot of researchers are taking this speculative approach and trying to explain near-death experiences as a whole um, using concepts that have no empirical evidence in at, at the moment. So the second way um, is bottom up. And this, I, as I said before, this is the way I would suggest we go about doing it. And one example of um, this is the AWARE studies that Sam Parnier did with cardiac arrest patients. They took one aspect of near-death experiences, which was the out-of-body experience. And they asked the question, can a person with a non-beating heart and so a non-functioning cortex um, be consciously aware? They had 2,000 cardiac, 2,000 plus cardiac arrest patients. Uh, in 15 different hospitals across Europe. And only 149 of those 
cardiac arrest patients survived. Um, nine of them had near-death experiences. Two of them had an out-of-body experience, two of the nine. Uh, but only one of those who had an out-of-body experience ha had a verifiable out-of-body experience. Um, so it was verified. Um, it was found that their description of the visual field was accurate. Um, however, it took 2,000 plus cardiac arrest patients to come up with that conclusion. But it's still an empirical validation. Um, so that's an example of an experiment. Second um, way of going about getting yourself um, empirical data is to take um, written accounts of near-death experiences and to analyze them. Uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Jourdain, uh, a French researcher, he took 70 accounts of near-death experiences, which also had an out-of-body experience. He analysed those the descriptions of the visual scene that people gave, and he came up with the conclusion that um, the out-of-body experience um, could be explained by assuming that there was a four-dimensional space, spatial space, not four-dimensional um, with time, ignoring time, there's four dimensions of space. Um, so that's um, Jean-Pierre Jourdain, and that's analysis of verbal uh, qualitative analysis of verbal accounts. Castle and colleagues also did this kind of analysis. They found that nine out of 34 near-death experiences said they were aware of being dead. So 25 were not aware of being dead or they didn't mention it in their uh, written accounts. Um, this suggests that you don't have to be aware um, of being dead in order to have a near-death experience. Um, a third way of going about gathering data would be to actually educate people in near-death experiences and to then suggest to them that if they some point in the future they have a near-death experience that they should try out certain actions. I've seen this um, uh, a German woman explain her near-death experience and how she tried um, certain things because she was curious as to whether or not she could do them within the near-death experience. Um, so, for example, you could say, can you move an object at will? Can you hug people? How does it feel to hug people? And after you have done, after they have experienced their um, out of body, sorry, their near death experience, if you could get them to write down their account and analyze it. In order to get the best data to analyze, whether it's quantitative or qualitative, um, you really need to have the participant um, introspect. So uh, they, they need to write down as detailed uh, an account of their near-death experience as possible. And in order to um, achieve that, you can have an interview, a probing interview, um, in addition to the written account. Now, finally, uh, another way of, of going about doing this bottom-up procedure is something that would probably be more relevant for the future, but I think will come and um, 
will happen at some point in the future, and that is computer simulation. Um, computer simulation is different from artificial intelligence. Um, uh, artificial intelligence is only concerned with producing a machine that can do something that is intelligent. Doesn't matter how it does it, as long as it does it. Computer simulation, on the other hand, is uh, the aim of it is to produce an, an, something intelligent that human beings do, but to do it in such a way that the human beings do it. So it's um, emulating the procedures that the human beings go through in order to do it. And the advantage of that is that you have to be very precise in order to program the computer to do it. And you can also then run the, the computer and see whether or not it does what um, it's supposed to do. Now, it might be that we'll need quantum computers in order to do this. Um, but quantum computers are coming online. Um, and again, within about 10, 15 years, they are gonna be um, a reality. 